My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, the du'as that are mentioned in the Qur'an upon the tongues of the prophets are the greatest of du'as. I will mention two du'as that I believe every single one of us should not just memorize but use frequently. All of us know these du'as. There are Qur'anic du'as on the tongues of the prophets of Allah. The first of them is the du'a of the prophet Ibrahim. And both of these du'as were said at times of great difficulty, at times of distress. When it appeared that there was no hope left, what dua did the Prophet say when all hope of this world was cut off? We learn in the Quran and in the Sunnah the duas of these two Prophets. As for the dua of the Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam, it is mentioned in the Quran upon the tongue of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu But we know from the hadith that the Prophet Ibrahim used it before our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And Ibn Abbas narrated that when the Prophet Ibrahim was about to be thrown into that fire, what fire is this? This is the fire of Nimrud. This is the fire that for three days and three nights, it was made hotter and hotter. The fire that they wanted to punish Ibrahim with when they accused him of destroying their idols. And instead of responding back, he mocked them and said, no, no, must be the, the, the other idols who killed the biggest one. They must have been jealous of him. So this young boy Ibrahim, probably 14, 15 years old, this young boy Ibrahim alayhi salam, and we learn from the traditions, he was the only Muslim on earth at the time. There was no other Muslim other than him at that time. And he believes in Allah and he rejects the idols. So when these evil people, when these mighty kings surround him and they tell him, unless you apologize and come back to our way, we will kill you in this manner. And they torture him for three days and then they make this fire and before they throw him in, what does he say? Ibn Abbas said, when Ibrahim was about to be thrown into the fire, he said, Hasbunallahu wa ni'mal wakil. This is the dua of Ibrahim. What does this dua mean? Why is it so powerful? When you say Hasbi Allah, you can only say Hasbi Allah when you know who is Allah. And then you put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A heart that doesn't have iman. A heart that is ignorant of Allah cannot say Hasbi Allah. When you say Hasbi Allah, you are affirming the power of Allah, the love of Allah, the fact that Allah knows who you are, what you're doing, how much you need Him. When you say Hasbi Allah, you are saying, Oh Allah, I recognize that when you decide to do something, nobody can come between you and your will. There is no strength, there is no power other than you. When you say Hasbi Allah, you say, I don't care who is against me. If Allah is on my side, that's all that I need. So Hasbi Allah is something that is coming from the heart and it is affirming the power and the protection and the might of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you say Hasbi Allah, you automatically imply who needs anybody other than Allah. He who has Allah doesn't need anybody else. And he who has everything except for Allah has nothing. Imagine the heart of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Imagine surrounded by a city, an army, the mightiest king alive is in front of him, threatening him, torturing him. He's a 15 year old kid. There's that fire that's been put for three days and three nights. Not a single human being in the world, his own father is on the side of the prosecution. Just imagine, not a single soul in the world to help him. Yet what does he know? Allah will protect me. Hasbi Allah. Oh Allah, you are in charge of taking care of these mighty armies. Oh Allah, I turn to you. You will deal with this fire. You will take charge of this whole world that has gathered against me. Hasbi Allah, I only need Allah. I don't need anybody else. So what happens when Ibrahim is thrown into that fire? The fire itself becomes a garden for him. A garden, a pleasant walk in the park. It becomes beautiful, fragrant, green, cool. 
This is what happens when you put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is exactly what happened in the lives of Ibrahim alayhi salam. And also in the life of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When the battle of Ahzab took place. And 10,000 strong were surrounding Medina. And there were barely 1,500 sahaba. There is no way they could physically fight against 10,000. 10,000 armed men. And they cut off the supplies. For one month they cut off the supplies. How long can you last? The people were beginning to eat vegetable, uh, the, the leaves of the, of the trees. They had nothing to eat. They're starving. They haven't had a proper meal for weeks. How long can the siege last? What is going to happen? They cannot fight. The Quraysh are outside with all of their allies, 10,000 strong. They cut off all of the food supplies, all of the caravans. How long can this go on? So they say, Hasbunallahu wa ni'mal wakil. And what happens? What happens? An army from the heavens comes. And 10,000 strong are rerouted, fled helter skelter overnight because Allah Azza wa Jal sent, as He said, Wajuluda lam tarawha. He sent an army, you did not see it. The wind began to blow, the thunderstorm, a tornado in the middle of the desert, and the sand was so severe and hard that they all had to flee 10,000 strong. Can you imagine an army of 10,000 was destroyed without one sword being unsheathed? Think about that. Without one sword being unsheathed, 10,000 strong simply disappeared overnight. Why? Because Hasbunallahu wa ni'mal wakil, that is the power of when you trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He'll take care of an entire army and you don't even have to unsheathe your sword. But as long as you show that tawakkul, as long as you recognize, oh Allah, you will deal with it. You will take care of it. Hasbi Allahu wa ni'mal wakil. And of course, I have to add here as well that you only do this after you have done everything in your power. The Sahaba built the, the trench. The Sahaba armed themselves. The Sahaba were ready for battle if need be. They didn't just sit in their houses and say, Allah will take care. You do everything you can physically. And then you say, the rest is up to you, oh Allah. And really, oh Allah, I only need you. Hasbi Allahu wa ni'mal wakil. So this is the first dua. Let us memorize it. Let us use it. And the second dua, which is also used at times of distress, at times of difficulty. I want to both these du'as to be because we go through all types of difficulties. Every one of us, life is nothing but difficulties and one tragedy after another. This is the reality of life. So the second du'a as well is a beautiful du'a. And it is the du'a of the Prophet Yunus alayhi salam. As we all know, as we all know, the Prophet Yunus alayhi salam, he uh, left his city without getting permission from Allah to leave. And this was a sin for the Prophets. The Prophets cannot leave the city until Allah tells them. The Prophet Yunus gave up. He said, my people are bad. They're not accepting. Khalas, let me just go. And it wasn't appropriate for the Prophet to do this. And so what happened, as we know, that uh, he went onto the ship and the people of the ship, they said somebody has bad luck here or somebody is bringing this punishment. Who must it be? They drew lots and it came to Yunus and there was a thunderstorm going. It was the middle of the night. They said, you're the one causing this, this, this omen. And of course, we don't believe in omens. These were not Muslims that were doing this. Nonetheless, they said, you're the cause of this bad luck. We need to get rid of you. And so in the middle of a dark and stormy night, in the middle of the ocean, when the thunder is going and the rain is pouring, complete darkness, they pick Yunus alayhi salam and they fling him over the ocean. Just think about that. If any of you have ever been in the middle of the seas, how terrifying it is even on a beautiful day if you fall into that ocean. Imagine in the middle of the night when the waves are coming and the thunder and the, and the rain and they throw him into the middle of that darkness and he plunges and plunges and plunges and as you all know, then Allah Azza wa causes a fish, a whale to swallow him. And that's why the Quran calls him Dhun Noon, Dhun Noon. A Noon in the Quran here means whale, the one of the whale. So Yunus is called the companion of the whale. And the whale takes him deep, deep, deep down the depths of the sea. Imagine brothers and sisters, Wallahi, these are stories that we know happen. It's in the Quran. We believe in them. Imagine being the Prophet Yunus. Imagine that claustrophobia, that stench, not able to breathe, completely blind in the depths of the ocean. And Allah Azza wa Jal says, what did he do? He realized he made a mistake. He realized he made a mistake. So what? Allah says, وَنَادَى فِي الظُّلُمَاتِ He called out in the depths of the darkness. 
Wallahi, how much darkness was there. The darkness of the night. The darkness of the depths of the ocean. The darkness of the inner chambers of the whale. Darkness over darkness over darkness. Complete and pitch darkness. Can you imagine the terror, the fear that any one of us might have had? We would have died simply of a heart attack. We would have died of fear. But Yunus alayhi salam, he realized, I need Allah azza wa jal. And so what did he do? وَنَادَى فِي الظُّلُمَاتِ أَلَّا إِلَهَ إِلَّا أَنْتَ سُبْحَانَكَ إِنِّي كُنْتُ مِنَ الظَّالِمِينَ From the depths of the ocean he calls out لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا أَنْتَ سُبْحَانَكَ Oh Allah, there is nobody worthy of being praised, worthy of being worshipped, worthy of being glorified other than you. سُبْحَانَكَ Exalted are you above anything. Meaning what? Some people who don't have strong faith, they blame Allah for their calamities and tragedies. They say this is because of Allah. This is because of God. Why is God punishing us? Why is God doing this to me? And this is a common phrase we hear. I'm a good person. Why is God doing this to me? We do not speak like this. We do not accuse Allah of any injustice or evil. Therefore, dear brothers and sisters, when a person says this phrase, La ilaha illa anta subhanaka, inni kuntu min al we he affirms for himself that I have fallen short. It was my mistake and error. And if this is the Prophet Yunus saying he made a mistake, then where do we stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And this is the perfection of repentance. You say, Allah, you are perfect. I am imperfect. You are holy. I am sinful. You are the ilah and the God, and I am the, the marboob and the abd. I am the one who is under your control. And so Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Quran, uh, We were the ones who saved him from his distress. And then listen to this phrase and memorize it, brothers and sisters. It is one of the most optimistic phrases in the Quran. And in this manner, when the mu'min says, La ilaha illa anta subhanak inni kutub min in this manner, we shall save all of those who are in distress. All of those who believe. All of those who turn to me. We will save all of them. So this dua is said whenever you are distressed. Yunus was distressed because of the problems of the whale, the problems of the... We are distressed because of other problems, much less trivial than Yunus, but nonetheless they are big for us. Family problems, financial problems, our boss is giving us an attitude, we're worried about our job, our family issues. These are our dhulumat, these are our darknesses. So when we are surrounded by these darknesses, what do we say? La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al-zalimin. This should be our dua all the time. And our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, in a hadith in Mustad Imam Ahmad, no Muslim ever says this dua except that Allah will answer him. No Muslim ever says this dua except that Allah will answer him. So these are the two duas, brothers and sisters. Memorize them. Make them a daily part of your rituals. Hasbi Allah wa ni'mal wakil. And la ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al-zalimin. Barakallahu wa barakum.